I have a chance. I have a chance to be saved. Brothers and sisters, we bear witness there is no God but one. There is no God with him. There is no God besides him. 
There is no God greater than him. And there is no God stronger than him. We thank the one true God for his divine wisdom and his perfect understanding of all things. We thank him for being the sender and teacher of all holy prophets and of all holy apostles. We thank him for the way of holiness revealed to his servants for our learning. We thank God for this combined anniversary of Fredericksburg, Newport News, and Portsmouth. I'm glad for the, our ministers that are here and them that were here last night that had to go, but God have been good to all of us. Amen. Had a very good meeting on last night. And I understand that earlier today there was a sister that came in and wanted to be baptized right away. She didn't want to wait. That's why our brother James left out and they took her to the Newport News Temple and baptized her right away. Last night, 16 was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank God for Pastor Singletary ministering there in Fredericksburg and uh, Minister James Wright in Newport News and Brother Minister Fletcher, who's been working here uh, in the Portsmouth area. To all of our ministers that are present, Minister Harris from Rocky Mountain, uh, Minister Phil from South Carolina, uh, Brother Minister Campbell, who's the new addition to the Fredericksburg, Virginia area, to all of our guests, Amen. we thank you for taking the time out to come to get your feelings hurt. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, I'm glad, and, I, and I'm not going behind your back to tell you this. <laughs> I'm so happy that you took the time out to come Amen. that I may hurt your sinful feelings. Amen. Because if God will work on you good enough, Amen. you're going to find yourself giving up Amen. and surrendering. Amen. And when I ask you want to be baptized, you're going to come willingly Amen. and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ at the repenting of your sins so you can escape the judgment of God that he's going to bring upon the entire human family. We thank God for this message of holiness. It is the greatest message, not just in America, but also the world. And there is not a message that exists today that's more profound. Nothing stronger than it. Nothing greater than it. And this is why you have messengers of Satan all over the internet trying to deter the people from obeying this message. And let me say to all of my viewers, false prophets over the social media, they're upset with you. And the reason why they're upset with you because you're being obedient to a message that contradicts Satan. And the devil don't want you to obey God's message. So you find men who spend time on internet, I'm told, who take out web pages out on us and out on First Church and two and three hours having discussions about Pastor Jennings and wasting all that air time. But that's like a little faucet drip trying to stop a tsunami. It'll never happen. What I'm preaching come from God. I didn't get it from a seminary school. I've never been to Bible college in my life. I never took not one Bible course. I have the best teacher. He's a great and mighty teacher. And he don't make scared men. In order for you to represent God right, God gonna have to make you a minister. And they're criticizing us now. They criticize us when we ventured out for our new international headquarters campus and many uh, false prophets, a few of them, got over the air and told the people and tried to encourage the people not to sacrifice that we may raise money to buy our new temple. 
They failed then. God moved us from 18,000 square feet to 200,000 square feet. So God gave us victory. And I'm probably the only preacher you will see over the air who when I ask for money, it will never be for a car. It will never be for a plane. It will never be for a suit or shoes. It would always be to either build a church or buy a church so we can cause false prophets much trouble. Amen. Amen. That's what we. And so there were some false prophets because we're, we want to dedicate our international headquarters temple next year, God willing. Yes, sir. And you're talking about 200,000 square feet. You know, that's a lot of work that we're doing. And we're working every day. My sister, you can come on in. They can find a seat for you. You brothers, find a seat for my sister. And if any brothers got to stand up, let them stand up and surrender their chair uh, to any of our guests. So any young brothers, just get up. You ain't got to think twice or three times. <laughs> just surrender. Give up and give over. And so our sisters, I don't want none of our sisters standing. Our old brothers can remain sitting, but you young soldiers, you... You stand up and suffer it out. Amen. Amen. Get some strength in your legs. If you put your cell phone down, maybe your legs will get stronger. <laughs> so there are, there are false prophets who have criticized us because, uh, like I, there was one preacher, he said, you mean to tell me, Pastor Jennings, all them thousands of people following you and they don't pay you don't get a home offering? I told him no. You don't get a, uh, a car offering? I said no. They don't buy your clothes? I said no. They don't send your children to school? I said no. He said, I ain't coming to your church. <laughs> it's abnormal to people. And you know what I said? Anytime it's abnormal that a preacher work. That lets you know how messed up things have gotten because even the Apostle Paul, he had a natural occupation. Not only was he a preacher sent to the world, but his natural trade. The Bible said he was a tent maker. That was his natural occupation. The Bible tells us this. Book of Acts chapter 18, we're at verse 1. Read quick. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. And what? And found, certain, uh, found a certain Jew named Aquila. Yes. Born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Uh -huh. Because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. Yes. And came unto them. And what? Had the wrong thing, didn't you? Mm -hmm. All right, son, while you find that, I'm going to go on and leave you behind. You say you're going to take one and leave one. I'm going to leave you behind. Well, and the apostle, the other apostles, Peter, James, John, they had a natural occupation. They were fishermen. And there was another apostle by the name of Matthew. He had a natural occupation. He was a tax collector. Well, I'm a property man. I deal with commercial and housing. I take property and redesign them. I love architect. I love it. I'm a natural architect and I'm a spiritual architect. Amen. Because once I redesigned the building naturally, God gave me divine skill to design the building within the building spiritually. For the Bible says, ye are God's building. So I have to redesign the building with the scriptures that the Lord died for. Are you ready now? Now I'm ready in Acts chapter 18 again. All right. And we're beginning again at verse 1. Uh -huh. All right. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Then what? And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy. Get to the point. With his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. All right. And because he was of the same craft. He, wait a minute. Because he was of the same craft or had the same skill. He abode with them. He stayed with them. And wrought. And wrought. For by their occupation, what was their occupation? They were tent makers. Amen. Amen. Tell your pastor, go get a job and go to work. Right. Amen. You should not be paying your preacher. 
Well, Pastor Jen is supposed to be giving him an anniversary. No false prophet deserve an anniversary. Amen. You're going to reward him for sending you to hell? <laughs> Think of it. That's right. Order in the court. That's right. Think of it now. Listen to the old troublemaker. You going to give a false prophet appreciation service? You appreciate the fact he lied to you? You appreciate the fact he told you it was three gods? You appreciate the fact that he have homosexuals preaching in his church? You appreciate the fact that he's divorced and got a second wife and he's still your bishop? You're going to appreciate the fact that uh, God never called him and never sent him, and yet he claimed God did? The only type of man that deserves honor is a man of God whom the Bible says worthy of double honor. Amen. So we labor for the souls of people. And because, you know, we're raising monies to finish our new headquarters campus, one man wrote me, he said, you don't have no Bible to get money to fix up no church. Give me the book of Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter Because they're after me. They're after me for everything. Yes, they are. I mean, they're after. They're just hunting me down like predators. But I got the duck in the scriptures. That's right. All right, I want you to know the Second Chronicles, Colonel Minders. Second Chronicles chapter 24. Mm -hmm. And we'll start at verse 1. Follow me. Joash was seven years old when he began to reign. Uh -huh. And he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. Yes. His mother's name also was Ziba of Beersheba. Mm -hmm. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. All right, read quick. And Jehoiada took for him two wives, and he begat sons and daughters. Yeah. And it came to pass after this. I want to say, well, wait a minute, Pastor Genesis. Back then he took two wives. That's back in the Old Testament. Yes, right. I, I, I knew Straight a false prophet heard that. Amen. Yeah, back then in the Old Testament when it was allowed. That's it. It was allowed back then. That's right. But Jesus come on the scene and said from the beginning, that was before it was any written Old Testament. It was not so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Second Chronicles 24 and we're at verse 4. All right. And it came to pass after this that Joash was minded. Joash was minded. To repair the house of the Lord. He wanted to make repairs mm -hmm. on God's house. And he gathered together the priests. He got the preachers together. And the Levites. Got the Levites together. And said to them, go out into the cities of Judah. And do what? And gather of all Israel money. To do what? To repair the house of your God. From no. Gather money to buy the preachers a plane. Gather of all Israel money to repair the house of your God. Gather money to buy the preacher a house. Gather of all Israel money to repair the house of your God. Gather money to buy the bishop a car. Gather of all Israel money to repair the house of your God. That's what we use God's money for. From year to year. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How often did they do it? From year to year. How often? From year to year. That shows you right there you can never do too much for God. That's right. Never. That's right. So God blessed us with a 200,000 square foot campus. Our main church auditorium alone can hold over 2,600 people. Our lower auditorium can hold over 12 or 1,300 people. We have two gymnasiums, two schools. Yeah. The largest school is over 50,000 square feet. And uh, I love to look out for our older brothers and sisters. So we're going to convert that school to a senior citizen's home for the saints of God. Yeah. We're going to do that. I believe the older brothers and sisters must be looked out for. And our older brothers and sisters must be taken care of. They, des they, they, they don't earn the right to be looked out for and taken care of. That way they can live on the church campus and keep the prayers going. That's right. Yeah. 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 Amen. Just, just, just keep the prayers going. That's right. That's right. You see, the preachers today, brothers and sisters, they want yours, but they don't want you. Hey, right. right, listen. I am after you. Not yours. 
So this is what we're laboring for. And uh, I want to say also, we're almost complete our new temple in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. In a few weeks, the carpet should be laid. And my, my brothers out of Philadelphia, we'll get the pews shipped down there, line everything up. Thank God by next year, God willing, 2019, we'll be ready to dedicate the new temple in the uh, Columbia, South Carolina area. God be our helper. Uh, like I said last night, uh, we were blessed to find a temple here in the Port Smith, Virginia area. God willing, we hope to be making settlement on that by next month. We found the, uh, our church in Mobile, Alabama. Well, the, the Saints been outgrew that years ago. And uh, we were blessed to find a new temple sitting on about three acres, uh, close to 11,000 square feet, including administration building. And uh, they wanted almost 400,000 for, for it. I told them, you're not getting it, you will never get it. <laughs> and brothers that have been around me know the way I do. I bid very low. I bid so low until it make people nervous. <laughs> Amen. So uh, they, we, they, they agreed to what we offered them. We offered them 200 and something, uh, about 235,000. And they counted me at 240. I said, oh, all right, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, that's a big difference from almost 400,000. So we took that, God willing, we make settlement, mm, I think it's next week or week after next. So through the week, I've been flying back and forth. Detroit, Chicago, we haven't forgot about you. I've been flying to, uh, in the Midwest, I've been flying in the Chicago area through the week. And sometimes Shade is, in fact, all the time Shade is with me. We land in Chicago, looking at different churches. I'm in Detroit, looking at different churches. In fact, this week I'll be in Detroit. We're starting a new church in Detroit, Michigan. We're starting a new church in Chicago. They're asking us to start a, a church in St. Louis, Missouri, and Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas, Wonderful. Colorado, Denver, Colorado. We, uh, we, we have to move by faith. Wonderful. Yeah. And I, I tell I, the brothers and sisters of First Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have a strong purchasing power. All I need is your cooperation. That's all you need. That's all. That's all you uh, when we ventured out for our new campus, uh, we had to trust God. We didn't have a million dollars in the bank. We didn't even have 500,000 in the bank. We didn't even have 300,000 in the bank. I don't think we had 200,000 in the bank. <laughs> But uh, I trust God, and the uh, campus was selling for $3.5 million. I gave them an offer of $2.6 million and didn't have it. Did not have it. Si signed the agreement in sales and didn't have it. <laughs> and they said, well, uh, you, we want us to take our stained windows. I said, yes, you can have your cartoons. We don't want them. Uh, but because I knew the value of them, Knowing about building the way we do, I told him, if you take them, you got to give us some more reduction. And you're going to give us the net worth of what them windows are worth. So they dropped it down another 400000 <laughs> Because by, by, by me being in building, I'm familiar with the Catholic diocese. And I know that when they sell property, they strip everything out of it. It's wall-to-wall -wall marble, and most time the Catholic diocese will strip the walls out of every drop of marble. But I told them, everything that's in here stays. You can have your statues. We don't want them. Take all your images out of here because Mary is dead. She ain't in here. <laughs> oh, Mary, don't you weep, and oh, Martha, don't you moan. I told them, all your cartoons you can have and all your stained windows you can have. So... When we got the saints together and told them what we wanted to do, the cooperation of the Truth of God family was so great. We asked everybody to sacrifice $1,000. We was talking direct to the members. Not people not in the church centers, no. We talked direct to the members because it is our biblical duty to support the work of God. And brother, the same day we made the announcement, People was coming up to the pulpit, writing checks. Give them to the church. The church of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of us came together then. We raised over a million dollars cash. 
And we did it in a few months. Cash. And every dime. And I'm glad we did because that settlement, they had the figures wrong. They said we had to come up with 700 and something thousand as settlement. How can you make over a $300,000 mistake? So we had the check. And then they looked back at the HUD sheet. They said, oh, Pastor Jennings, we're so sorry. Uh, you need another 300,000, yeah, at least a million. Hmm. My wife looked at me, I looked at her. I said, just a minute, I called my secretary. I said, uh, I need another 300,000. She said, oh, we got it. She said, the cooperation of the church was so great, we raised over a million dollars. I said, send it here. <laughs> send it here. And, and through the sacrifice of the church, and the people, even viewers that watched the program. Amen. And one thing stands out to me. There was a woman preacher. And we preach against women preachers. This woman preacher wrote me and sent me a check and sent me a letter. She said, even though I know you preach against women preachers, I disagree with you. He, she said, but even I want you to have that campus. Here's a check. <laughs> so, the truth of God Every dime go to the work of God. Our telecast alone is over. We spend over a half million dollars a year. Just on telecast alone. And brother, we see the results of it all around the world. So when I travel in different places like in Detroit, I went to Detroit a few months ago and baptized 100 in two days. And the people in Detroit in the meeting said, tell us what you want us to do. They said, if you want a church here, we'll work with you, Pastor Jennings. We want a church here and we know you can't do everything. You tell us what you want us to do. You find the church, we'll work with you to buy it. People are eager. Because they got a leader who don't steal money. That's right. They don't have no thief. That's almost like a miracle. Amen. I never stole from the church since I've been black. And I've been black. Last time I checked all my life. <laughs> I, someone said, well, you're not tempted at all? No. You know why? I'm too scared of him. Yeah. Bible says, what do a prophet a man that gain the whole world and lose his soul? There's a lot that we can do if we come together and do it as one. And he gathered together. Do you hear the Bible talking? Still in 2 Chronicles 24 and verse 5. Says what? And he gathered together the priests. He gathered together the priests. And the Levites. All the Levites. And said to them. And said to them. Go out unto the cities of Judah. And do what? And gather of all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year. And. And see that ye hasten the matter. Hurry up. Hurry up. That lets you know God don't like slowfulness. That's right. Bible says, see that you hasten the matter. How be it the Levites hastened it not. Do you hear that? The mm. Levites didn't get in a hurry. Right. What? And the king called for Jehoiada the chief mm -hmm. and said unto them, Why hast thou not required of the Levites to bring in out of Judah and out of Jerusalem the collection according to the commandment of Moses, the servant of the Lord? Do you hear that? Amen. Moses was the servant of the Lord. He was leading God's people. That's Amen. right. So we don't believe in giving, raising money and all that stuff. And it should line the preacher's pocket and buy him cars and planes. I get on a regular plane like anybody else. That's right. Be uncomfortable like anybody else. That's right. When, the, when I go through the TSA, if my ticket, they don't have on there at the time, uh, TSA or priority, mm -hmm. and, and the TSA agents, they, Pastor Jennings, glad to see you again. Take your shoes off. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they do. They ain't looking at it on Pastor Jennings. No. Pastor Jennings, take your shoes off. Uh, put, your, uh, you put your laptop in the basket. Uh, can we take a picture with you? I'm like, all right, all right, go on in. <laughs> and when that thing beep off, Pastor Jennings, I'm sorry I got to search you. I say, go ahead. You ain't going to find nothing but gospel. <laughs> You're not going to find nothing but gospel. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Amen. The world need this message. That's right. And the preachers are upset. That's right. Because there are thousands coming out of their churches like Israel was making the exodus out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And the churches have been playing with the people for years. You know, I thought about what Brother Bowser said. When you think of the money you gave to these organizations, these so-called movements. And all the money, 99.9% .9 of the time went into the preacher's hands and to his family's bank account. That's right. Yes, sir. And they made a proclamation. We not only build churches, we feed the poor. Amen. We clothe the naked. Why? That's Bible requirement. We got over 50 churches in uh, South India, over 100 churches in East India. There are poor saints there. Very poor. So many times we bought land and bought tons of grain and had it shipped so they can plant and grow rice, grow food, and make distribution to every family. Food, grain, Vegetable, just vegetables and fruits, meats, buy livestock. Why? Feeding them. Hard earned money from the sacrifice of the saints. It ain't just telecast. Hey man, we our job is to do all of it. Or we don't get credit for none of it. Are you getting me? So this is what we do with God's money. We believe in building. The work of God. We want to start businesses for the church. Amen. That way those who don't have employment can have employment. Right. Amen. Well, we want to do all of this for God's people. Amen. Amen. And you got to have a vision. Amen. If you don't have a vision, everything will perish. Now it came to pass. Listen at this. Now still in 2 Chronicles chapter 24 and at verse 11. It came to pass. That at what time the chest was brought unto the king's office. And. By the hand of the Levites. Yes. And when they saw that there was much money. When they saw there was much money. The king's scribe and the high priest officer came and emptied the chest. And what? And took it and carried it to his place again. And. Thus they did day by day. And gathered money in abundance. And the king and Jehoiada. Gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord. No, give it to the work for the service of the bishop. As such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord. They fixed the pastor's house with it. The house of the Lord. No, gave the pastor new windows. Such as did the work of the service of the new house. New tires for the bishop's car. Of the house of the Lord. Bought the bishop's wife a mink coat. Such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord. No, bought him some new alligator shoes. Such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord. And do you see why preachers hate Pastor Jennings? That's right. My God, by the time we done stripping him buck naked, he got to go to McDonald's and go to work. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Are you getting me? That's right. McDonald's. Amen. That's right. Go to work, false prophet. Go to work. And go to hell after you go to work. Amen. Because if you're not going to stand on God's word, you're in the lost cause. That's right. All right, let's go to work in the book of pain. Yes. This is the book of pain program. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Open your Bible anywhere, Williams, and give me something good because all of it's good. All of it's good. All right, son, let's have it. Now in the book of Isaiah chapter 30 and we're at verse 9. Follow me. That this is a rebellious people. Do you hear? Amen. <gasps> They start off hurting you. That's right. But before I go further, I want to greet our new viewers in the state of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. We have a telecast there out of uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. And uh, what is that other area? Is it major? Milwaukee. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I want to greet all of you there as well. Mm -hmm. Also, you that's in Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi, I look to be in your area next year. God be our helper. We want to just drop it from the air and we'll come there in person and shoot you from the ground. Amen. You that are in California, God willing, we'll be in Sacramento, California uh, next month. We baptize already over 128 souls 
in the name of Jesus Christ. And think of it, all of them that was baptized, we don't have a telecast in California. All of them that was baptized saw us over social media. My God, they've been reaching out from the all parts of California. And Minister Santana, he's so faithful. My God, he just, he go all up and down the state baptizing people by the number. So, and also you that is in Connecticut, God willing, will be over in your area next year as well. To my viewers on the Fiji Islands over there near Japan and China, give us time. We'll be sending a team over to you to baptize you uh, next year uh, and few. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, and you that's in the Philippines, they have written us. We'll be sending for the first time our fact-finding team. I organize a fact-finding team because it's about four ministers because people and church organizations want to be a part of the Truth of God family. And uh, I just can't be everywhere. Folks want me to be everywhere, but it's impossible. The only one that can be everywhere is God. That's right. And I'm glad for the ministers who come aboard the Truth of God train who really want to work sincerely. Not trying to make a name for themselves because in this truth you won't have no name but the name of Jesus Christ on you. Uh, so uh, we sent our fact-finding team for the first time to two locations in Africa. Now about three weeks ago. Uh, they was in Mozambique and Malawi and they've done an excellent job. I believe in uh, Malawi they baptized 44 and Mozambique they baptized 49. 93 all together was baptized on that trip. That's a blessing, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. So the church organizations throughout the continent of Africa, throughout Australia, throughout New Zealand. So next year our fact-finding team, I'll be sending you to the Philippine Islands because there are so many church organizations pulling on me, please. Would you please accept us? So we got to designate a place in the Philippine Islands and then have all the preachers and organizations come to one designated place. And that way they can meet with all the bishops, all the elders, all the deacons and whatnot and answer all the questions that need to be answered. And then uh, they're, they're, they're my forerunners. They're my forerunners. That way, hopefully there's less I have to do when I get there. But uh, we send them out to investigate and see all these things. So, and then we get there, and they they come along and lay the groundwork, mm -hmm. and they come on and lay all the wiring and all the, and then we come there and level everything down with Bible. All right, William, let's have it. That in Isaiah chapter thirty and verse nine, mm -hmm. that this is a rebellious people. Well, I'm true, pretty sure God had America in mind when He said that. Amen. This is a rebellious people, hard haired stubborn. Stiff neck, rebellious, mm -hmm. fighting against God and fighting against the words of God. That's right. What else are they? Lying children. Liars. Lying. Liars, I said. Lying children. Why? Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Do you hear this? They don't want God's law. And some say, Pastor Jennings, you don't have no love. Mm-hmm. It's like a child who's been spoiled by their parents mm -hmm. because that child so used to having its way. Yeah. And the parents let her run all across the chairs and the shoe or across the shoe, the chairs with the shoes on and go in the refrigerator and don't wash his hands and talk back. Yeah. And when they talk back, the parents say that's cute. Mm -hmm. But when that child go to man, grandma and grandpa house, the child is unhappy. That's right. Because discipline is the call of the day. That's right. All mama got to do. I remember I was in a barber shop and uh, there was an old man there. Obviously, he was the grandfather of the young boy. The young boy was in the chair, kept acting up and whatnot. And uh, the grandpa kept telling me, if you don't stop now, I'm going to snatch you off that chair and work you over. And he was a, he was a big fella, he only 11 years old, looked like he was in high school. He hit back at his grandfather. His grandfather said, boy, listen, I'm going to get a hold of you. And he, talk, he just kept talking back to grandpa. And in some cases, grandma has more influence than grandpa. Yeah. Brother, grandpa said, all right, when he's done cutting your hair, I'm going to tell your grandmother on you. The boy froze <laughs> and dropped to his knees and just said, please don't do it. I, I mean, he pleaded with him. 
He said, no need to play. I mean, he pleaded, and then he said, I give you a dollar, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he knew that Grandma was going to lay it to him. So many people feel as though that I am too strict. And some of the people who feel as though I'm too strict, strangely enough, came up in strict teaching. Mm -hmm. But what have happened? If you've been away mm -hmm. from what you need too long, mm -hmm. you start to go back yeah. to your old foolish ways. Right. It doesn't matter how good we raise our children. Give, teach them good morals, good ethics, Amen. how to be respectable to all people. Amen. If they don't value that teaching Amen. and then get in an atmosphere that's immature, yeah. disrespectful, that's right. foolish, mm -hmm. barbaric, mm -hmm. the good that they learn have a tendency to be diminished. Yeah. Right. And then they become just like the atmosphere they're in. Yeah. Old folk can bear witness what I'm talking. Haven't you look at young people and just say, you yeah, like you ain't got no home training. Oh, yeah. And in some cases, they don't have no home training. But yet in other cases, they have plenty of home training, but don't respect it. That's right. Don't value it. That's right. Many of you that are watching and many of you that are here had old bishops who had some form of firmness. Then when Bishop die and Junior step in the pulpit, everything go right down the hill. That's right. The word of the Lord is no longer preached. The standard of God is no longer lifted. The word of God is rejected and the philosophy is more accepted. Theology become the sermon for the day. Amen. Entertainment is accepted more and the word of God is rejected more. Amen. And then when old folk who used to be saved, mm -hmm. baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue and hang around that sugar so long Amen. until now, the same old strict teaching they used to live by, they've been in the sugar bowl of hypocrisy so long until now they reject strict teaching. That's right. They reject sound teaching in their old age. Right. Be not deceived. I had an old woman tell me one day after service, she shook my hand, Pastor Jennings, now, now I, I know you're telling the truth, but I ain't wearing my dress long like an old woman. <laughs> and she was holding my hand, old enough to be my grandma, shaking my hand. She said, I ain't wearing no long dress like an old woman. I just looked at her. That's right. Holiness years ago, Amen. people felt good to say, I'm holy. Amen. Am I right, I said? Amen. It was respected even by the enemies of God. Yeah. They fought it, but they saw that holy woman just by her look, and that holy man by his look and conduct, and it gave them a sense, if I may use the word, pride. Amen. They used to call the churches years ago, Holy sanctified churches. Didn't they do it? That's right. Holy sanctified churches. So the more philosophy and theology have crept in church. And the more the preachers allow their children to dictate what go on in church. It went from church to having what is called children's church. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. There are churches that so caught up in this worldly foolishness, they have what is called children's church. What on earth is children's church? Amen. Children's church is Sesame Street. Yeah. It's the electric company. That's right. It's a romper room. Yeah. 
It's Mr. Rogers' playground. Yeah. Amen. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my, I'll church. Build my church. Yeah. Now, there is no such thing, and I want you viewers to get this, and you that are here. If the Lord have one church, and if you see the church you're in is changing right before your eyes for the worse, until it has become unrecognizable as church, and it is more recognizable as a bar. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. It looked just like a bar. Yeah. Right. It looked just like a dance hall. Yeah. It looked just like a club. Yeah. It looked just like a party. You know why? Because it is a club. Yeah. It is a party. Yeah. Why would you allow yourself who claim you're saved for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Lose out with God. Harried for the Holy Ghost 20 years. And then because your love for some organization that you see is going to hell. You sit right there and complain. And yet keep patronizing it and lost. That's right. That's right. These so-called apostolic organizations are doing like the mafia. The mafia is set up by families. Yeah. That's right. Is that right? That's right. The Fletcher family, Campbell family, Singletary family. You got to watch them Bowser family folk. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Wright family, the Williams family. The this is the way the mafia set out. That's right. yeah. And the family are responsible for their territory. So if Fletcher is the head of the family, and if he died, Either his son or someone in the family will be what is called the underboss. Amen. That's exactly what churches have become. If Bishop Jones about to die, before he die, he will groom his son. He will not look at the life of his son whether his son is holy or unholy, he just want his work to fall in the hands of family. Notice, his work. Not the work of God. His work. See, this is not the work of Pastor Jennings. This is the work of God. Are you listening? Church should not be set up like organized crime because church don't belong to me. And church don't belong to you. Amen. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. So if it's his church, he set the rules. That's right. That's right. He makes the preacher. He decides who's going to lead his people. Until he said he would take down one and raise up another. Ain't that what he said? So church should not be ran like the mafia. Church should be ran, governed, operated, functioned by scriptural law. That's right. Now, viewers and you that are here, because I'm pretty sure my many guests that are here, you from some church. And many things we preach over the air, you actually see it in your church, even if you don't like the fact you're faced with it. Because many of us was once in a crossroad. And you know what made us be in a crossroad? Our understanding begin to come open. And brother, when your understanding come open, and now you're faced with the reality, if I stay here, I'm going to hell, that hurts your feeling. Am I right, I said? Because now you're looking at how long you went to this place. How long? You followed this man. The years of commitment that you gave. But you cannot look at the amount of money you gave 
and the position you hold, you can never look at that more than you look at your soul. Once I look at my soul, I may love you, but I love my soul more than I love you. Hallelujah. Oh, take God. I love my soul enough to go in the office and tell Bishop. Bishop, why is your wife the assistant pastor? Bishop, how did you get a second wife when your first wife is living? Bishop, why is it now that you used to preach about speaking in tongues, but now we ain't got to speak? Bishop, how is it you went from one God to telling us it's three now? Bishop, why is your wife a woman preacher? Am I right, I say? Talk to me. Now, this is what happens. The preacher is so into himself. Bishop feels as though you ain't got the right to question him. So when you ask Bishop questions, what's going to happen? You're going to be the topic of his sermon. That Sunday. And he's going to label you as hardhead. Troublemaker. You follow witchcraft. Yes. And yet it's not an old stand. Yes. You taking my tithing? Yes, you taking my offering? Yes. I got the right to question you yes. about what you preach. Yes. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Don't let none of these liars yes. Come on. Come on. tell you this is it's a sin to question God. Tell him, you ain't God. You ain't God. And if Jesus was walking here on earth, if he was, I can question him. For there's no Bible that says you can't question God. Who is it better to ask questions? He know all things. I can ask him anything. Another tactic that bishops have is scare tactics. When you begin to ask questions, right then, oh, now if you ask these, if you're going to question me now, you're going to go to hell, you're going to die. You're going to die. A plague going to come into your house and burn all, oh, they make it dramatic. Amen. This is why I thank God for the telecast, because now it educates the people whom the bishops wish will stay ignorant and it puts a ball in their back. And, and the bishop can't do you like you used to. That's right. You're no longer scared of him, but now you're scared of God. Fear God. Yes. And this is what we're laboring for people to do. Stand up. Stop being cowards in these sheep organizations. Stop letting them trick you. Bamboozle you. Lie to you with a good song and dance. And then send you on your way. You can't stand up. Until you get knowledge in you. The Truth of God program is truly designed to educate creation. It makes you look at church different. You won't look at church the same. You become more aware of your religious surroundings. Now you begin to look at the Bible and you listen more closely to the preacher. Before then, whatever a preacher's saying, you just say, Amen. 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 Preacher, shake that way, you shake that way. Yeah. But when knowledge comes in you, yeah. now you can judge properly. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Yeah. 
And when you get knowledge, you become motivated to question preachers. You see, we encourage folk. You question me all you want. I'm going to take your nose to the Bible. I'm going to take you deep sea diving. Because in the book is infallible information. Knowledge develops a people. Ignorance handicaps a people. No deceiver want you to know he's deceiving you. A deceiver want you to be ignorant, dumb. Let me make it more plain. You take a sister, good morals, good ethics, good standard. Even if she's a sinner, just certain things she may say, look, I ain't doing. But then she meets someone who she think got her best interests at heart. So he has street smarts. Which give him a different form of experience and a different level of intelligence. Because street smarts don't come from the library. It's a different kind of intellect. There's a street intellect and there's an internet intellect. And most people that got an internet intellect, when the internet died, they senses died. Street smarts. Causes you to hear what's not being said. That's right. Amen. Then you get what I'm telling you. That's right. What do you mean, Pastor Janice? A man who got street smarts and a woman who don't have street smarts, that man can strike up an ordinary conversation with you about just your job and whatnot. And that's all you're talking about. You're not talking about anything inappropriate at all. But simply having a talk about your job or about your likes or dislikes or or the weather. You can talk about the sun, the moon, the star, and the leaves and the trees. And you can tell him about you. Where you're vulnerable, where you're strong, where you're weak, your wants, your experience, and your inexperience. Because his street intellect know what to look for. Know what words is more aggressive than others. Know what words is more passionate than others. You understand? That's right. He know what to look for, how to look for. It's like a piano player. If you're an experienced piano player, depending upon the song, there's certain chords you will hit more aggressively, and then there's certain chords you will hit in a more mellow tone. If you never heard a solo or sang a song and you got a good ear, you know her next key. Yeah. Mm. If you got a good ear. Yeah. If you don't have experience, the one that have experience know the next key. Yeah. That's exactly where these preachers are. Amen. They are experienced devils. Yes. And they've been hypocriting for years so they have become masters. The scripture term, the way it describes the devil, that old serpent. Old serpent. Right. Now, if the serpent is a deceiver, and the Bible says old serpent, that means he's a master in tricking, conning, manipulating, deceiving. So he can tell the congregation anything and this is why congregations go to church and carry a Bible, but never follow a preacher in the Bible. That's right. Have you noticed a difference? Most people go to church and they carry a Bible, but they ain't following no one in the Bible. Because the man's message is not even coming from the Bible. It's coming off the computer. That's right. If it ain't coming from the computer, it's coming from a sermon he got written in a stack of paper. If you get knowledge, that's why I tell the people, when you watch the telecast, it ain't only to entertain you. Get your Bible, get your pen and paper, and follow me. When you hear Williams read, and hear us break down and explain, you're getting understanding, you're getting food for your belly. Meats for the belly and belly for the meats. The more knowledge you get, the closer you can walk with God. Then the better you can serve God. The less you know the less you can do. Amen. So when you get more knowledge in a false church, I know from experience. 
My former pastor was my uncle, my great uncle. And some of you can bear witness, because some of you, your father probably is the bishop. Some of you sisters, your husband may be the pastor. Or your brother getting ready to start a false church. <laughs> and you want to help him because he's your brother. See, that's what I mean by not being family. See, if your brother's a false prophet, you don't help him start a church because he's your brother. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. You don't help someone because they're your friend and they say, you know what? I think I'm going to start a church. Hey, man, let's go ahead and do it. The buck and the preacher. <laughs> go out and just start a church like it's a game. This is going on across the board. Husband want to start a church. Wife said, okay, come on. If that's what you want to do, go ahead. This is the famous quote, if the Lord leads you. Let's talk about that. This is a famous quote, if the Lord leads you. How can you make this statement so frequently, so loosely? The Lord do not lead nobody opposite from scripture. Always remember that. The Lord do not lead no one to perform anything that contradict scripture. So when a man said, God have led me to start a church, he lied right then. Amen. Church been started. That's right. You're not even baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, which means you a sinner. You don't even have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, so you're not in the body of Christ. Right. So why would the Lord move on a sinner? Start a, church. Start a church. A man called me on my way here yesterday. I don't know the man. He started, I, I answered the phone, I didn't recognize the number. I forgot what part of the country he was from. He said, Pastor Dennis? I said, yes. He said, you don't know me. I said, that's quite obvious. <laughs> He said, I'm scared. I said, well, I said, before you start talking, how you get my number? <laughs> I mean, you called my cell phone. How you get my number? He said, I, I apologize. I said, apology accepted. Now, before we have this conversation, sir, how did you get my number? He said, well, I went on the internet and did an investigation. I started probing because of my type of background, my job, and I found your cell phone number. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's, that's crazy. He said, I, I humbly and respectfully apologize. He said, but I, I had to call you because I'm scared. He said, I was a minister. I said, what kind? He said, the devil. <laughs> he said, I'm being honest with you. He said, I lived a life smoking all the weed I want. Got married five times. He said, I use women just to marry. <laughs> He said, one day, I was searching internet on my phone, and you came up, and you preached hell. Right. Mm. And he said, such terror came upon me that I never experienced. I forgot, he said he was somewhere. He said, but a ball of fire appeared to me right in my face. And he said, I've been terrified Ever since. He said, I don't want to go to hell. Mm. He said, when I saw this ball of fire, I haven't touched weed since. He said, the fear of God like I never experienced. Right. He said, I am not trying to minister no more. I want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, all I did was play church for years until I met you over the internet. People have played church. But the mistake, the sad mistake is, you thought you got away with it. Nobody that plays with God gets away with it. There are two ways that God stop you. One, in mercy. Two, in judgment. I'd rather for God to stop me in mercy. In mercy. If God stopped me in mercy, like the song says, I have a chance to be saved. All of us here, God stopped us in mercy. And please don't think that is anything so 
good about nobody, including yourself, that you just had to be saved. Salvation is a gift. It's an act of God's mercy. God don't look at you the way people look at each other. He don't look at what you own or your status, your position, your beauty, your money. God don't look at that. God look at your sincerity. Amen. See, a lot of folks says, Lord, I really want to be saved. And I don't want to go to hell. Please lead me the right way. And then God end up leading them to this message. But what this message does, it challenge what you told God. You know why? If you really want to be saved, nobody is going to be saved without paying the price. And that's the thing that yeah. most folk is not prepared for. Yes, sir. You plead with God, Lord, yeah. lead me to the straight yeah. 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 Lead me to your word. I want to be right in everything. I don't want to go to hell. Do you know how many thousands of people ran up on us on YouTube and never heard of us? Amen. And thought it was a mistake, and then they found out it was God's will. Amen. It's not a mistake when you run up on holiness. Amen. It is the purpose of God and the will of God. In fact, when you run up on this, it is an act of mercy. Amen. Now, everything you told God, how you want to be saved, now knowledge comes. That you never heard. Opposite from what Bishop been telling you. That you got to give up everything. If any man will come after me. Listen that Jesus talking. In St. Matthew chapter 16 and at verse 24. Follow me. Then said Jesus unto his disciples. What? If any man. Any man. Will Give chapter and verse again. St. Matthew chapter 16 and we're at the 24th verse. Preachers don't teach this. No. If any man will come after me. And do what? Let him deny himself. Amen. Huh. Yes, Amen. Sir. Now, I don't want to do that. No, sir. That's I know you don't want to do it. No, sir. Do that. No. William look like he don't want to do it. No, I don't want to do it. <laughs> it is not the nature of a man or a woman to deny themselves. Of what they love doing. Amen. But in order to walk with God, we must be transformed. transformed. That's right. If any man, if any man will come after me, come after, start to pursue Jesus. Come after me. And do what? Let him deny himself. Wait a minute. Mm. Before he said deny, what did he say before then? If any man will come after me. And let him deny. Let, let do what? Let let, let let let. Oh, that's the word I want. Let. The moment you say it, let, let. That means you have to do it willingly. He don't force you. That's right. You volunteer. Yeah. Now let's understand something. You're not gonna give up everything overnight. And I tell you this because many folks hear us preach and preach hard. They be like, man, that man expects for you to stop everything overnight. I don't expect you, not even God don't expect you because you're not able. There are some things have you gripped for years. That's why you need God to help you to overcome. If you want Christ, yeah. Christ wants you. But you can't come to Christ and not change or not want to change. That's right. Give me the book of Chronicles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Chapter 7 verse 14. I want you to pay attention. 
to the language of the scriptures. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and at verse 14. Give chapter and verse again. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and at verse 14. Follow me, then we'll go back to Matthew. Second Chronicles chapter 14. Chapter and 7. Chapter 7 and verse 14. I want you to pay close attention to the way the language of the scripture is written. Listen good. If my people. Who do you belong to? If my people. Who do you belong to? My people. My people. Amen. Amen. Young brothers and young sisters, you belong to God, and some of you ain't got sense enough to know it. Because you're giving the devil so much time, you are robbing yourself of such beautiful knowledge that you're not your own. You belong to God, and it's only the mercy of God that you're still living, and you're acting like a fool. Some of you here are still cigarette suckers, joint suckers, partiers. Still chase men, still chase women. Take your heroin. Smoke your joint for municipal purposes. Amen. <laughs> Every Friday night you out there partying. And then Sunday you're watching your brother on television. With a beer in your hand. Calling each other. Yo, yo, what's up, dog? Hey, hey, are you watching Gino? Yeah, man, I'm watching Gino. Did you hear what he just said? Woo! Man! Hey, he's coming to town. You going to see him? I'm going to see my dog, man. I'm going to hang out with him. That's right. All right, I'll be your dog because I'm going to chew you up with scripture. Amen. <laughs> Satan wants us to love wrong more than right which make it more difficult for us to surrender wrong and get right do you understand the more you love wrong you become woven more tighter with sin and you become committed obligated you feel a sense of obligation with the sinner and then God will step in and break up your relationship with your sinner. You ain't our nature to hate sin. Because sin work in favor of our flesh. This is why we need a new nature. That's why God instituted being born again, which introduced a new nature. And when you have a new nature, you got to be taught the word of God, which formulates a new mind. If I have a new mind, it gives me new feelings I never had before, so it develops a new heart. My new heart gives me a new connection or relationship with God that I never had. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Chapter 7. Verse 14. If my people. If my people. Which are called by my name. Which are called by my name. Shall humble themselves. Hold it. Amen. Then what? And pray. Right there. How many of us here pray? Raise your hand. Everybody in here pray. Now. Have you thought that there's something you must do before you say those prayers? No prayer. And I want everyone to listen good. You that are watching around the world, you get this. There is no prayer that's of any value without humility first. Amen. You have to be humble, humble. first. That's right. Pay close attention to what he just read. If my people which this is Second Chronicles, chapter seven, the seventh chapter, and verse fourteen, and verse fourteen. If my people which are if called, my people which are called by, by my, my name, name shall humble themselves, then what's after uh, humility and pray? But what's first? Humble themselves. Then what? And pray. In other words, God don't want you to talk to Him until you humble, humble. yourself. That's what do right. you mean? Before you talk to Him, God wants you to agree to submit to Him. Right. Amen. 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 Now, right. humility. humility. We get on our knees. 
But that don't mean we're humble. It has a humble appearance. I can be on my knees, but I'm self-righteous, arrogant, stubborn, high-minded within my heart. Now do you understand? Humility is bigger than falling on your knees. That's right. Wait a minute, Pastor Jenny. The Bible said every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. You think that means literally your legs? Mm. If it meant that, how can a person kneel who don't have no legs? Yes. True kneeling is the submission and the humility of the heart. Of the heart. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. Now, so all of us in here. Pray sometime. That's right. mm -hmm. Ask yourself, is it out of ritual? Mm -hmm. Is it habit? Come on. Mm -hmm. Or are you doing it because mom and pop taught you to do it? Right. Right. Humility must be first. first. Prayer after. That's right. Humility first. Prayer after. after. Because when we start doing things just as a form of ritual, there's no significant meaning behind it with sincerity. That's right. We just do it just to do it a formality. Amen. But if I'm humble in my approach towards my Lord, if I'm humble, you know, you throw a gun in someone's face, it humbles them. That's right. What is it about the gun that humble you? The power of it. Power. Yes, sir. Now look at God. Maker of heaven and earth. He controls the breath in your nostril. The giver of food on your table. The supplier of all need and the sustainer of all worlds. There is nothing about him that we can afford to do without. That's right. That's right. Everything about him you need. Amen. My young brothers in the hood with your pants hanging down, strolling out there in the street. You think you're good with your hands? Then God stroke you. You're only 17. He take your punching momentum away. The mouth that you used to cuss out women that's old enough to be your mother, he twists your jaw. Amen. Am I right? You are too arrogant and too disrespectful towards God. You young sisters who love to switch your goods. Lord. So everybody can bump their horn at you. Yeah. You young girls in school. Who's constantly pushed up against lockers. You think it's cute to wear pants smaller than your body. Mm. To wear blouses smaller than your body. That's right. That's right. So when you live to get compliments for men, from men, what's going to happen to you when you don't get none? Yeah. Our whole life. Supposed to revolve around God. When you come to the realization what you was made for, God said, I made you for my glory. God didn't make you to strip for men. God didn't make you do lap dances for men. God didn't make you to be a bed mattress for men. God didn't make you to advertise your body for men. God didn't make you to use women, men. Talk to me. 
Right. You will never get a man to respect a woman until you give that man to truly respect God. Amen. You will never get a woman to respect herself until she first respect God. Because when you respect God, you have the knowledge of what you was made for. You was made for God's glory. When you realize you was made for God's glory, you will feel a sense of loyalty and commitment to your creator. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. If my people, which are called by my name, will... Shall, uh, shall humble themselves, humble themselves and, and pray and pray and what else and seek my face look at the steps humility prayer pray. seek my face seek my face humility prayer seek my face that's right if you want results of your prayer humble yourself humble themselves that's right that's why the disciples said to Jesus teach us how to pray Teach us how to do it. Yeah. Are you listening? What is prayer, Pastor Jennings? What kind of words should I use? Sincere. When you truly talk to God, there is no proper or improper punctuation marks. That's not the time you talk to God like you got a college degree. He's not impressed. Have you seen preachers? We're going to ask Reverend Lucifer to lead us in prayer. Most wise and omnipotent, awesome heavenly father that have created the solar ubiquitous illuminary up in the heavens. <laughs> the god of the Milky Way, the god of Saturn. <laughs> oh, great god, I don't have the supercalifragilistic and the espialidocious. <laughs> and I know they say. So when we hear these pulpit entertainers, yes, we say, oh man, I wish I can pray like that. He ain't praying. And for a pretense, make long Listen prayer. at the Bible. Follow me in your Bible. Now in the book of St. Mark chapter 12 and at verse 40. Mark 12 and 40 says. Which devour widows' houses. They devour widow houses. And for a pretense. And they pretend. Make long prayers. They faking. Faking it. If I talk to God and talk to him from the heart, yeah. yes, sir. I don't care how broken my grammar is. Right. Lord, I ain't right. Yes, Do you understand? Yes. Amen. Not, not, not. Dear Lord, Amen. I'm I'm so improper. <laughs> I am out of my comfort zone, dear Lord. Right. No, I ain't right. That's right. God help me. I'm wicked. That's right. I got problems, Lord. In other words, when you talk to God, be yourself, but be humble. Be humble. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Be humble and talk to God from the sincerity of here. Yeah. You men. Don't be so caught up in your manhood that you're scared to cry if need be. Sometimes you're so full. Words don't come out. You get on your knees with the intent to talk to God. Nothing come out your mouth. Tears. Hallelujah. Down from, hallelujah, 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 from your face. Your manhood have nothing to do with it. That's right. You gotta surrender your manhood. That's right. That's why Jesus said, unless you come as one of these children, That's right. get rid of your manhood. Amen. Get rid of your womanhood. Yeah. Humble yourself yeah. and come before God. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't go with God. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. Get rid of your manhood. That's it. Cry, cry. You're not a real man, no way. Until you obey God. That's right. It ain't a real man in this building. Until you obey God. That's right. You ain't a real woman at all. Yeah. Until you obey God. That's right. 
I cried until well, you know. Pastor Jennings, Go ahead. what do you say about beauty? What is your definition of beauty? Your skin? Your hair? Your shape? You want to know what's beautiful? When you're holy. That's right. That's right. Over the years, skin changed. Shape changed. Vision changed. But the beauty of the Lord had never changed. Glory to God. You understand? Favor is deceitful. What did the Holy Ghost say? In the book of Proverbs, chapter 31 and at verse 30. Follow me. Favor is deceitful. Favor is, de favor is deceitful. And, and beauty, beauty is vain. It's unprofitable. But a woman that feareth the Lord. A woman that fear God. She shall be praised. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. If my people which are called by my name. Shall humble themselves. Shall humble themselves. And pray. Pray. And seek my face. Seek our face. Seek my face. I told you there's only one God to talk to. Right. My face. My face. One. Oh, then what's the result? And turn. Oh, wait a minute. Turn from where? From their wicked ways. All right. Holy church. And you that are listening. First thing, humility. Less thing. Next thing, pray. Next thing, seek my face. Then what's next? And turn from their wicked ways. While I'm humbling myself. While I am praying yeah. and while I'm seeking his face, what am I doing? And turn from their wicked ways. I want God to do something for me. So I got to start stopping. That's right. I got to start turning Hallelujah. to him. That's right. Huh? That's right. Well, Lord, change me. Turn. Let's talk. Turn. How did God change you? Although he allows something to happen to give you the opportunity to change. Change come when you are willing to be changed. That's right. That's right. Sometimes certain experiences that God allowed to happen in your life change you forever. That's true. Is that right? That's right. Change you in a way that you never thought would change you. We have to be making an effort to turn, turn. from their Lord. wicked ways. Now hold it. Turn. What may seem to be not wicked hmm. don't mean it's not wicked. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. When a thing is wicked is when that thing is against God, even if it put a smile on your face. That's right. That's right. Even if you feel good. Even if you enjoy doing it, if God is against it, it's wicked. That's right. If billions of people patronize it and follow it, but if God is against it, it's wicked. That's right. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. So, turning from our wicked ways, that means we have to make an effort to refrain, cease, stop. Separate ourselves from certain places, certain things, certain acts, and certain people. Are you listening? For me to stop contaminating my physical temple with cigarettes. If I'm trying to stop, I can't afford to keep hanging around my smoking buddies. I'm trying to stop smoking weed, I can't keep hanging around my weed smoking buddies. I'm trying to stop drinking, I got to change my atmosphere, man. I can't keep hanging around you. And you know, every chance you get, you asking me for a light, I'm giving you money to buy liquor. How can I criticize you for getting drunk and yet I'm helping you to buy the bottles? Think of it. I'm criticizing you for getting drunk, but every time you need a ride, I'm driving you to the bar. I'm your own personal Uber. So I have to start turning from their wicked ways. So 
in some cases, that fake marriage gonna have to dissolve. Because brother, Barbara is still living. And you married to Grace. And yet you want grace from Jesus. Barbara's still alive. So now you gotta give up grace. You and Grace have to make haste to make space between you and Grace. There has to be some space between you and Grace. That's right. Glory to God. Now, because in God's eyes, you're in adultery. That's wicked in God's eyes, but it's satisfaction to your body. That's right. So now you got to decide who is more important, who is more valuable, grace or God. That's right. Now, if you decide that God is more important, you and Grace got to have a sit down. Grace, hey, I love you, but Barbara's still living and I can't be saved. You know, we keep doing this thing. Well, wait a minute. You know, Grace, Grace chewing that chewing gum. Wait a minute. You talking about giving all this up for some Jesus? Amen. Then all of a sudden, Grace do a lap dance for you. And you sitting there, all I want from Jesus. Amen. <laughs> The Bible says, choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. If God be God, serve him. If Baal or the devil be God, serve him. The whole world have to make a choice. That's right. And as a result of such, we are placed in the valley of decision that the Bible talks about. Multitudes, multitudes. Did you hear this? In the book of Joel, chapter 3 and at verse 14. Listen. Multitudes. A whole lot of folk. Multitudes. Multitudes. In the valley of decision. And what? For the day of the Lord is near. The day of the Lord is closing in on you. In the valley of decision. Why are you still trying to decide what you want to do? That's right. Oh, Jesus. Pastor Jennings, but he's a good man. There's none good but one. And that one is God. But Pastor Jen and my first husband, he beat me. You don't have to stay with him. The Bible justifies separation. The Bible says if she depart, let her depart, but let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her own husband. The Bible is justifying separation. You ain't got to sit under the roof with no man beating you, verbally abusing you, or threatening you. You ain't got to do that. That man can quote all the scripture he want. What he quote don't mean nothing. Tell him to come on and live by himself or sit down and shut up. Right. It ain't no woman and you women that are watching. It ain't no, you don't have to stay under the same roof when a man beating you, slapping you, cussing you out, threatening you. Right. So Pastor Dennis, I can leave? Give me the book of Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 7, we're starting at verse 10. First Corinthians 7 and 10. And unto the married I command. Unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. God prefer that you don't leave the husband. But. But. And but. If, but. 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 Mm -hmm. God knew that every marriage ain't going to work out. That's right. So he implement a law just in case you both end up leaving each other. But. Not divorcing each other. No. Leaving each other. That's right. Listen. But. But. And if she depart. No, if she divorce. If she depart. Divorce. Depart. You can leave without divorcing. That's true. That's what the Bible's talking about. Leaving. That's right. Separating. That's right. Not divorcing. Amen. 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 But if she. But and if she depart. Leave. Let her remain. Unmarried. They what Bishop said. Mm -mm. Bishop said, go on and leave and get you another one. Right. Leave your Honda and go get you a Camry. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> leave your Lincoln and get your Cadillac. Right. Leave, your, leave your Ferrari and get your Porsche. Right. That's what your Bishop told you. That's why so many of you folk watching it is mad with me. 
because I come on back to Bible and giving you what God gave you, one Eve and one Adam. Amen. 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 Pastor Jennings, you mean to tell me if I leave my man? All right, Pastor Jennings, I'm still young. I still got some fire in me. What am I supposed to do to put the flame out? But and if she depart, if you depart, let her remain unmarried. You can't get no more meat. Or, but if your fire get if your fire get too high, mm -hmm. here, 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 here's your sprink, here's your sprinkler system. Or be reconciled to her husband. You got to go back to the one that you left. That's right. I don't want them, Pastor Jennings. Then I can't give you permission to give your body to Tom when Bill is still living. Right. And you, huh? That's right. I can't give you permission to give your body to Tom when Bill's still living. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me I got the, what I got to do with my body? Offered up as a living sacrifice, sacrifice. holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's right. That's right. Amen. But well, what, what about when Jesus said he let you put away your wife? Mm -hmm. Give me the 10th chapter, chapter of the book of Mark. Mark chapter 10, and we're starting at verse 1. Listen. And he arose from thence and cometh unto the coast of Judea. He knows that certain scriptures folks don't fill the spirit over. <laughs> certain ones. Nobody, nobody speaking tongues. Certain ones. You know? Hey, there's certain scriptures folks don't fill the spirit over. You know, other scriptures folks be like, hey, glory, how am I my shot? Hey. We get one of these scriptures up. <laughs> and I like that, he said. Yeah. I don't like the way it was what he said. And he arose from thence and cometh unto the coast of Judea. Yes. By the farther side of Jordan, and the people resort unto him again. Yes. And as he was one, he taught them again. He taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him. And said what? And asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Is it lawful for a man to get rid of his wife? Tempting him. Trying to tie, trying to try Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Man. How are you going to try someone who know all things? That's right. You know you got to be a fool. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. And he answered and said unto them, What? What did Moses command you? What did Mo Folks love Moses. Yes. Folks love Moses more than they love Jesus. That's right. I can't even count the amount of letters folks talking about Moses, Moses, Moses. Don't you know one greater than Moses came on the scene? Oh, yeah. Huh? Eh? All right. And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorce. Hey, Jesus. Moses let you write that divorce. And to put her away. And get rid of her. And Jesus answered uh -oh. and said unto them. Jesus answered and said to them. For the hardness of your heart. Wait a minute. Why did Moses let you do it? For the hardness of your heart. Why did Moses let you do it? For the hardness of your heart. Right then that told you who divorce is for. What kind of people. That's right. That's right. That's right. God people don't have a hard heart. hard heart. A hard hearted person is a person that's caught up in the flesh. And they don't want to follow the will of the spirit. The hardness of the heart is is a stubborn, stubborn heart. That's right. Moses let you do it for what reason? For the hardness of your heart. And because their heart wasn't right. He wrote you this precept. But what? But from the beginning of the creation, God made male and female. From the beginning of what? But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. So what did God say? For this cause for this reason, shall a man leave his father and mother. And cleave to what? And cleave to his wife. Hold it. All right, hold it right there. I want this to be good for you fellows that are leaving your father and mother, but you're cleaving to the wrong species. Go ahead. Mm. Are you listening? Go ahead. You're cleaving to the wrong species. That's right. That's right. God said that a man leave. For this cause shall a man leave. Shall a man. A man. A man. A man. A man leave. Leave his father and mother. Father and mother. And cleave. To who? To his wife. To his man. His wife. His man. His wife. His man. His wife. His man. His wife. Somebody's wrong. That's right. Then there shouldn't be a rainbow flag or nobody church. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Now, Wonderful. don't get upset with me mm -hmm. and say I disagree with that. Mm -hmm. Give chapter and verse. Mark chapter My 10. name ain't Mark. 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 So you can't say, Pastor Jenny, you were doing all right until you came to that. It was here before I was born. <laughs> That's right. The reason why your flesh disagree with it, because it's good to you, but it's wicked to God. Yeah. And this is one of the things you got to turn from stop doing. Turn. That's right. Amen. Yeah, 
That's right. Yes, sir. Anytime that woman is married and her first husband still living mm -hmm. and she got rid of her and Mr. Brown divorced and mm -hmm. now she's married to Mr. Black, mm -hmm. every time she uses Mr. Black name, she lies. That's a lie. That's right. Because she's a brown, brother. That's right. Long as long as brown breathes, you're brown. That's right. You may switch like you black, but you brown. Amen. When you sign those check, Mr. Black and Mrs. Black, that's truth thin lie. Mr. Yeah. Black, he's black, but Mrs. Black is not black. She's really Mrs. Brown. That's In right. God's eyes, you're brown. You brown. know why? Mr. Brown is still living. <laughs> huh? That superhero, Mr. Brown, right. still living. That's right. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, take God. Go ahead. Amen. Go ahead, man. Mr. Mr. Black can buy you a Mercedes. Mr. Black can buy you a mansion. Mr. Black can give you a joint account. And Mr. Brown can be no good. Yeah. But as long as Brown is living, you're bound to him. Bound. That's right. And as long as you live with Mr. Black, you are living in adultery. That's it. And if you're Mr. Black's first wife mm -hmm. and Mr. Black never been married, that means Mr. Black is living in fornication. Right. Because Mrs. Brown, who's married to Mr. Black, her husband's living, so that makes her live in adultery. In adultery. So the whole relationship is unclean. That's right. Dirty. Yeah. Wicked. You're living in sin, right. and every time she lay with you, she commit fornication. But every time you lay with her, because you've never been married before, you commit for, uh, fornication, and she commit adultery. adultery. That's Two acts right. on the one sheet. That's right. Go to one hell. That's right. For this cause, Amen. Let the people see. Let the church say, Amen. you may not feel good, Amen. Amen. don't want to give them up, Amen. want to go to bed, Amen. find a place to lay your head, Amen. oh yeah. Don't you feel better now? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does it hurt? Show it hurts. But this is old-fashioned preaching that preachers used to preach years ago. But they stopped preaching it because the devil dealt with these leaders, these bishops of many of these apostolic churches who was firm against divorce. Bible way used to preach against it. Bishop Lawson organization, the one that Bonner took over. Refuge Churches of Our Lord Jesus Christ used to preach against it. Bishop Brooks, Bible, uh, Way of the Cross, used to preach against it. All these churches that baptize in the name of Jesus Christ has the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues from pulpit down have been sold out for meat. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. My Lord, my Lord. Then have the audacity to tell you in these organizations it's God's will. It's a new revelation. The Bible speak plain is for the hardness, hardness. hardness of, of your heart. heart. And a hard heart is a hard. stubborn heart. Amen. 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 That's why the prophet said, create in me a new heart. Amen. Amen. Your heart is too hard. Amen. That's right. That's right. You churches have become an embarrassment. To God, yeah. and you members, you're no better because you sit right there and whine and complain and you still support it. That's right. So that means you got play. Well, I don't agree with it, Pastor Jenny. What you go there for? I'm not a drunk. I don't agree with drunks. Why am I hanging out with them? Who knowing the judgment of God. Do you hear this? In the book of Romans chapter 1 and at verse 13. By the way, Amen. church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wear the cross, Preacher. you went by the cross. Yeah. What happened? What happened? Church of God in Christ, what happened? That's right. 
Church of Pillar Ground and Truth, what happened? Amen. Amen. Assemblies of God, what happened? That's right. They that are after the flesh yeah. do mind the things of the flesh. They that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. God's church. We're after the spirit. That's what we're after. That's right. Spirit. Spirit. A lot of you bishops was good. And you held a strict standard. But then you fell in love with some church member. Mm. Am I right? That's right. You saw her directing the choir and too much stuff was moving. All, all that stuff just moving. Amen. Every time Bishop saw, Bishop was just clapping. He lost, he lost all composure. Yeah. Before then, mm -hmm. he had a standard. Yeah. Yes, sir. And now Bishop is ready to leave his wife. True. For the choir member. That's true. And then what makes it so bad to get other members on board, he throw God in his lust. Mm -hmm. And say, church, I got a revelation. Years ago, we used to be against divorce. He called a shata, I'm a liar. <laughs> did, did, did you get that tongue? Did you get it? Huh? I don't want that tongue to skip by you now. He called a shata, I'm a liar. You get, you get that, didn't you? Glory to God. And they take God because they don't fear him and blatantly lie and say God gave them a new revelation about divorce. And the reason why he said you that lie because he's burning for this woman. And they resort to the same method when he won a man. Yes, yeah, say God said it. And y'all see this taking place right in your churches, just sitting right there and watching the church change until it's unrecognizable. You going home trying to call different ones who you know is prayerful. Man, we got to pray for Bishop. We got, if Bishop don't respect God, Bishop is going to hell. Amen. 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 When a man lose respect, for God's word, he has lost respect for God. That's right. If Pastor Jennings wants to do wrong, don't let me blame God. Yeah. Oh, the Lord showed me. The Lord ain't showed me nothing. No. Just call a spade a spade. That's right. That's right. Brother, you see that woman switching? Don't say, man, the Lord worked in a mysterious way. No. You just see them hips. That's right. That's right. That's all. That's all. The Lord ain't dealing with you. Lust is dealing with you. Now you call a spade a spade. That's right. That's right. Amen. This message is just too real and too raw for people who don't want to do right. That's right. Because it's up in your face. It make you accept the reality of your own weaknesses. But if we don't accept the reality of our own failures, how can we talk to God to bring us up if we first don't admit we're down in the first place? Amen. Don't you hear the prophet say, rejoice not my enemies, for when I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, God shall be my everlasting light. You think the word of God is designed to work in favor of our flesh? No way. Man serving God and then God telling me that I got to humble myself, I got to pray, I got to seek his face, I got to turn. Man, you know how hard it is to turn from what you enjoy doing? That's right. Turn. Amen. After I turn from my wicked ways, then, uh oh, then will I hear from heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I got to be doing something. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
Then God promise you what? Then will I hear from heaven. You will get an answer. And will forgive their sin. Wait a minute. Who in here, who in here don't want God forgiveness? Yes. See, a lot of folks see me preaching against wrong. That's right. And because of that, they misinterpret and think, Hallelujah. I look down on people. I don't look no. down on nobody. No. 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 It's my job to preach against wrong. Yes. That's right. I have folks tell me, Pastor Jennings, well, my pastor don't preach against wrong. I know you don't. <laughs> Ain't hardly none of these preachers do. None of them do. God preacher, if he represent God, he must preach, it is written, preach the word. And from Genesis to Revelation, it speak out against our wrong. There's nothing in the Bible that condone our wrong. That's right. That's right. That's right. If there was no hell, I would never preach against wrong. No. If there was no hell, ain't no need to have no church. No church. For what? What consequences you got to deal with? That's right. Nothing. I wouldn't go to church. No. I probably would never even come to Paul Smith. For what? For what? Do whatever I want, how I want. Pretty sure I can get some brothers to hang out somewhere. My brother Campbell is from the mountains of West Virginia, but there's some clubs up there. <laughs> Ain't that much hills. There's some, there's some, there's some uh, clubs somewhere, somewhere in the valley. Somewhere. In other words, if you want to go to hell, mm. somebody will help you. Oh, yeah. That's true. Somebody will hook up with you and help you. Hook up. Oh, you listen to what I'm telling you. That's right. Listen at this. Then will I hear from heaven and, and will forgive their sin and, and will heal their land. Now, the land that God will heal is you. The word healing also means deliverance. And all of us need to be delivered from something. That's right. And the greatest thing we need to be delivered from is the way we think and what we feel. Oh, yeah. So the truth of the matter is, we need to be delivered from ourselves. That's right. Our enemy is ourselves. The evil, many of us are so quick to see the evil in others, but we don't want to acknowledge the evil in ourselves. And one thing about God's word, it shows you, until the Bible describes the book like this, it says, as beholding yourself into a glass. Now, when you look in the mirror, Sometime a person may think they're skinnier than what they are because how narrow the mirror is. And they say, oh, I lost weight. No, you didn't. Your mirror is just narrow. <laughs> and then some folks say, man, I can't wait. No, your mirror is just wider. Like some folk go to the carnival and the mirrors make them look all distorted. All kind of ways. Well, there's a distortion in our nature. And that distortion does not agree with the equal ways of God. Ways of God. Right. Right. We are distorted mentally, emotionally, spiritually, distorted and corrupt. Oh, yeah. And a lot of our corruption, not only did it come because we were sinners, we have received added corruption hmm. because when we came into the church, Satan corrupted us in the street and he kept corrupting us when we carried in church through teaching. That they may add sin. Uh oh, you hear the book of Isaiah? In the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, and at verse 1. Says what? Woe to the rebellious children, saith the, saith the Lord. And? They take counsel, but not of me. Wait a minute. They take counsel. But not of me. But God don't have nothing to do with this kind of counsel. Mm -hmm. And that cover with a covering. They cover with the covering. But not of my spirit. But God is not in it. That they may add sin. They add sin. To sin. You just keep piling up. You was out there drinking, partying, smoking, dancing. The same thing that so many of you are doing now. Some of you go to church on Sunday because it's Sunday. It's ritualistic to you. Right. Right. Mama say, all right, let's go to church. Come on, mom. I don't want to go to church. You live here, don't you? Right. You going to church. All right, I'm going to church. Or you go to church because your boyfriend want to take you. Or you go to church because your girlfriend want to take you. Or you go to church because, hey, your buddy want to take you. But some really don't want to be in church. Some don't want to be in church because the same junk they doing, the church they go to do. They went to a party out there. Here we go. Here we go. Just out there jump. And then they went to a church Sunday. Someone got in the pulpit. Here we go. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Let's get the Jesus beat. Get the Jesus beat. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's right. And that's what church become? Now, 
This is the logic that a false prophet used. We, had the res we got the resort to something to gain young people. Yeah. Have you heard them say that? Yeah. Look at the thousands of young men and women we had. That's right. We ain't resort to nothing Amen. but right. preaching the word. That's it. Because the Lord speaks plain. If I be lifted up yeah. from the earth, yeah. I will draw oh, all men, all men yeah. unto me. God hath proven to me that I do not have to go backward. Yeah. I do not have to resort to sinful methods right. to yeah. get one soul. We ain't going to slow down or back up from this hard gospel to keep a member. And we ain't going to back up to get a member. That's right. We're going to kill you to get you here. <laughs> and we're going to kill you when you get here. That's right. Let's do a brief survey. Now, would you agree that some people were more hardcore sinners than others? Only, only you can judge yourself. How many, when they was out there, may consider themselves a straight up hardcore sinner? Raise your hand. Come on, just tell the truth now. Hardcore, a hardcore sinner. How many will consider themselves, you know, a reasonable sinner? <laughs> How many will consider themselves just always a goody two shoes? Raise your hand. <laughs> See, Carter, Carter, Carter. Put, put, Matt, put the camera on him, Matt. Stand up, Carter. Stand up. <laughs> Now, I want all of you in South Carolina to know <laughs> this brother right here, he raised his hand to the goody two shoes. <laughs> now, I want to say to him that you're a liar. <laughs> and the truth <laughs> is not in you. Not in you. I ought to tell the church to stone you like Israel. <laughs> now, everybody all right? A real hardcore sinner, man or woman, know what it takes not only to get him or her out of sin, they know what it takes to keep them out. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. And this little sugar daddy cheap weak preaching yeah. will never do nothing for him or her. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Because they constantly feel that sin tugging on That's them right. with such a force. That's right. That's right. All right. That's right. That's right. Amen. A son that love evil cannot afford to have a passive father who will never reprimand him. You may talk to him, but sometimes talk and stop. My father talked to us, but he was the one that said, I ain't going to keep talking. When he reached, and he had the fastest belt in the West. <laughs> When he took that belt off, I, I, I always would look at it because I know it's going up. <laughs> and I had the sheer look of terror. <laughs> a hardcore sinner or a so-called mediocre sinner. Right. Churches today, because there is no crying out against evil in churches. Right. There is no crying out against Satan in churches. Yes. They make sin appear to be fair seeming and acceptable. And by the time you done hearing the preacher, you concluded, well, it ain't no sin to be a sinner. Right. So therefore you become comfortable. Now, the more 
or the longer we are comfortable in sin, the more difficult it is to get out of it. Yeah. Because the more comfortable we are in it, we don't see nothing wrong with it. So then it becomes a part of our life. And we start calling wrong right. Until God sent a preacher to shake you up out of that sleep. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Remember, you're a sinner. And there's consequences. Even if you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and do have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Without sound teaching, you start getting weak with the new birth. You get weaker and weaker and weaker. And the same things that God delivered you from, because there's nobody pounding on you, you start drifting right back off to. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? A hardcore sinner needs something to pound on him or her. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Are you listening? Amen. You have, when I came up in the hood, slap boxing, body boxing. Mm -hmm. Body boxing hurt more. You know, slap boxing, you know, they go out there and try to be pretty and whatnot. <laughs> body boxing, you ain't cute. No. We stood toe to toe. And threw our, our hip into each other. That's right. Ribs, kidney, stomach, jaw, everything from top to bottom. Amen. I mean, we put it in each other. Amen. We dished it out and we take it. That's right. We have a body boxing gospel. Amen. Oh, yes. That's right. Your pastor's got this little slap you gospel hmm. with their finger. You better stop it. <laughs> stop it. The Lord don't like ugly. Stop it. <laughs> How in the world are you going to take that infidel serious? Yeah. Sin is a problem, is it not? Oh, yes. Yeah. The only one that can help us overcome it is God. Amen. Amen. To the point we have to ask God, Lord, help me to hate sin. That's right. That's right. That's right. Am I right? You literally got to ask God to help you. Here's the word of God is falling. And you can drift off right while the word of God is preaching. You see a sister sitting out there or you see a brother out there. Or you see a minister up here. <laughs> a sister may see nothing but his necktie bow tie. A brother may see nothing but her in a hat. If you walk up to the offering plate, he just see a hat. Right in church where the word of God is preached, he done stripped her clean. She done stripped him clean. Am I right? Because the Bible requires a single eye. Do you see where God deals with and only God can command us what we can or cannot do with our uh, physiology and anatomy. That's right. That's right. Only, God only God can God. tell us what to do yeah. with the body. Right. Our body is the temple of the living God. Yeah. It takes a hard gospel. Oh, yes. The Bible described the word as a bit in a horse's mouth. And when you get the reins of that horse and pull to the left or the right, it goes right, left, goes left. When you pull them, oh, it stops. That's what the word is. That's right. That's right. We're telling creation, whoa! And creation is dragging me all around. I'm yelling, whoa! I don't want to stop, Pastor Jim. I don't want to stop. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. This is the most toughest message in the world today. That's right. That's right. And it shocks people. They see so many people coming to it. What it proves is plain and simple. Everybody don't want to be lost. And there are many people that just got tired of this junk that they know is not church. Amen. 
If the church can't save my soul, what in the world am I going for? Oh, yeah. If the message in that church is not qualified enough so I can meet God, what I'm going for? You don't go to church to see your family. You go to church so you can get right with God. So ask yourself what you're in. Is it good enough so you can meet the first resurrection? Well, I know my pastor preached the word. How you know? But you got the Bible up there. I don't mean nothing. Anybody can read from the word and yet not preach what they're reading from. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters. Turn from your wicked ways. It's time to get on God's side. Repent of your sins. Who everybody? Be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you're not saved. Who? You? you hey, if you're a preacher today, or thank you are, you're not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you've never been saved. You're still a sinner? And you're still in your sins. Anybody want to be baptized the right way? In the name of the Lord Jesus, stand on your feet. Come on. Glory to God. Come on. You want to get it right? Stand on your feet. Wonderful. All of you. All of you that are standing. You see them brothers and sisters back there? Go where they are. All of you that are standing, go right where they are. If you bow your head and raise your hands, you're not saved. You join some church, you ain't saved. You pray the sinner's prayer that ain't never been in the Bible, you ain't never been saved. Everybody got to repent of their sins. Everybody. Who will take God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Portsmouth. Time for you to get on God's side. Pastor Jennings, I'm saved. Saved from what? You ain't baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You're still a sinner. If you bow your head and raise your hands, you're a sinner. Join the church. Sinner. Got sprinkled by a priest. You're a little damp sinner. Pray the sinner's prayer. Such a prayer don't exist. You've been bamboozled, lied to. Still a sinner. Everything under the sun must repent. repent. Your mother, your father, sons, daughters. The Bible says, then Peter said unto them in Acts 2, 38. Repent. Repent. And be baptized. Who? Every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. How what? For the remission of sins. What's the results? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Who Christ. promised it? For the promise is unto you. To who else? And to your children. And? And to all that are afar off. Even as many. As the Lord our God shall call. With many other words that he testified to exalt, saying. Save yourselves. What should everybody in Port Smith, Virginia do? Save yourselves. In North of Virginia. Save yourselves. Chesapeake, Virginia. Save yourselves. Newport News. Save yourselves. After Virginia. Virginia. Save yourselves. Everybody! Save yourselves. Hallelujah. We thank God for the souls gathering. Amen. This has to be the message for the last days. Amen. My God, they keep getting results like this everywhere around the world. Everywhere. With a hard mm. message like this, yes. how you can baptize more in one day True. than most preachers have in their entire lifetime. They've been faking in the pulpit. Amen. That's true. Get yourself right. Come out of your churches. Mm -hmm. When you repent of your sins, don't you go back to these churches no more. Stay out of the church. Amen. Stay out. Amen. Who? Everybody. That's right. Stay out the churches and come walk with the way of holders. Now I want to give everybody an invitation to our closing year service. Come on up to Philadelphia. I know some of you won't travel nowhere. Come on up to Philadelphia. I'm giving you a personal invitation. December 27th through December 31st. Come on up to Philadelphia. Service every night. Every night. Prayer. Five days of prayer. Church will be open from morning all the way to evening. Praying every day. Five days of prayer. 
You come on up to Philadelphia and hang out with the Truth of God family. You don't hung out with your boys on a corner. You don't hung out in the bar and hung out on the, and, and everything else. Come on and hang out with us. Amen. Be a part of the best thing. That's, dear brother, this is a great move of God that's sweeping not just America, but it's sweeping the world. Amen. All nations. The Bible says it shall flow on the air. Who give me the correct time? Who give me the correct time, brother? What is it? All right, 349, 339. Just like preachers, can't speak the same thing. <laughs> now, evening session begin at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, prayer begin. Come on back. Hit your knees. Prayer. Everybody, come on back. Amen. I'm, I'm the guest. You the host. You live here. Come on back. Come on back and get another dose. Amen. Bless God this, this evening at 5 o'clock. Let us all stand. Minister Williams will close us out in prayer. Let us pray. Help the Father. We do praise your holy name. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your precious word. We ask heaven the Father that you would give us strength. Savior. Be obedient to all of that. We ask that you remember the soul that's going down in the water. Yes, sir. We ask you to bless them and fill them with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Help the Father, we do give a name to praise and all honor. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let everyone say, Amen. 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 Amen.